Hi, I'm Phil from the Soundproofing Store, and today we're going to talk of some common soundproofing hacks and myths. The internet is full of articles, blogs, and YouTube videos about soundproofing hacks, promising quick, easy, and cost-saving ways to soundproof your room. In this video, we'll focus on the most common of these and explain why they aren't the miracle cure they claim to be. In fact, they're less of a hack and more of a myth. Sound and soundproofing is a very complex subject. So before we talk through these hacks, we need to understand at least the basics of soundproofing science. To get the best results when soundproofing a structure, such as a wall, there are two main objectives. The first is to increase the mass of the structure. Mass is basically weight and density and is very important for blocking sound. So for example, 300 mil of concrete is going to naturally block a lot more sound than 10 mil of timber because it has many, many times more mass. So a soundproofing system needs to add lots of extra mass to the structure. A very important point is that the extra mass has to cover the entire wall, floor or ceiling that you're soundproofing and be airtight. This is to create a barrier to block the sound. If there are gaps for air to get around the soundproofing, then sound can get around. Think of soundproofing like waterproofing. It's only as good as the weakest point. Secondly, we need to improve the wall's ability to absorb and dampen sound energy. Sound is a vibration energy, and vibration travels through solid materials and can transfer through the contact of solid materials. So when you create a sound on one side of the wall, the vibration energy of the sound travels straight through the wall to the other side. There are two ways to reduce that vibration. The best way is through decoupling, in other words, building another wall in front of the existing wall with a gap in between. This makes it much more difficult for the vibration to travel through because it needs to jump across a physical air gap. The second is to add resilience to the wall, allowing the wall to flex and dampen the vibration in the same way as the suspension springs in your car dampen the effect of bumps in the road. This is the science behind soundproofing and the most effective soundproofing will include both of these objectives. If you're looking at an alternative which doesn't include any of these, then quite simply, it won't work. So, how does the science of soundproofing fit in with the many soundproofing hacks out there? Let's start with the widespread hack of using soundproof paint and soundproof wallpaper. Let's look at this realistically, using the science we just talked about. If a typical brick party wall has around 300 kilograms of mass per meter square, is adding one or two millimeters of wallpaper or paint that weighs less than a kilogram per meter square going to block any more sound? No, it's not. It also doesn't decouple the wall or dampen sound energy. So don't be misled. Soundproofing paint or wallpaper doesn't exist. Don't waste your time or money on paint or wallpaper claiming to be soundproof. The next hack we see a lot of is adding soft furnishings to the room, such as carpets, curtains, and rugs. These are often recommended due to people not properly understanding the difference between soundproofing and sound absorption. We've got a video all about this topic linked in the description below. But basically, soundproofing is trying to stop sound from getting into or out of a room. A good example would be stopping sound from your neighbor's property getting into your property, or stopping the sound in your property from getting out and disturbing your neighbors. Sound absorption, on the other hand, is improving the acoustics within the room by reducing the amount of echo. Now, adding soft furnishings to your room 
helps to reduce the amount of echo in your room, making the acoustics in that room nicer. But it isn't going to stop sound outside of your room from getting in or inside your room from getting out. Another similar hack is egg boxes and the modern equivalent foam tiles. You've probably seen YouTube videos where people have these on the walls in the background and people often assume that it's soundproofing. Again, they're very lightweight, so they don't add mass to block sound and they don't cover the whole surface, so sound goes around them. What these are used for is sound absorption, just like with the soft furnishings. If you add these around the room, they will help to some small degree with reducing echo in the room. They don't stop sound getting in or out. If reducing echo is actually what you're trying to achieve, then there are far better products, such as these that we have on the wall behind me, that are far better to use. And we'll put a link below to our sound absorption video for more info. Another myth or quick fix is adding layers of acoustic plasterboard to the offending wall to help soundproof it. This will add some extra mass to the wall, but it doesn't add any of the isolation or the dampening, which is crucial for effective soundproofing. The best way to think about acoustic materials, such as plasterboard or mineral wool, for example, is that they're ingredients used for soundproofing. They're not soundproofing on their own. Soundproofing is a bit like baking a cake. You need the correct mix of ingredients in the correct quantities and put in the correct order to get the result you need. A bowl of sugar on its own will never make a cake. Acoustic plasterboard is a useful soundproofing ingredient, but to get the desired result, you also need other ingredients and to use those ingredients in the correct way and the correct order. So I'm afraid just putting some acoustic plasterboard straight on the wall is not going to block any more sound. The last thing I wanted to discuss isn't a myth or a hack as such, but it's part of the same conversation. Be wary of cheap soundproofing solutions or companies promising soundproofing for every budget. The hard truth is that your noise problem doesn't care what your budget is. The soundproofing system you need is determined by the type of noise problem you have and the construction of the building. There are certain things you physically need to do to solve certain noise problems. And those things may cost more money or take up more space, but it needs to be done to solve the problem. If you don't have the budget for that, you'd be better to wait, save up your money, and eventually do it properly and solve the problem than to rush into buying a cheap solution that isn't suitable for your problem. You'll only be disappointed in the results and will have wasted the money you did spend. Every situation is different. And in some cases, a thinner, more simple, more cost-effective solution is going to be enough. But that should be determined by your situation, not your budget. Remember the old saying, you get what you pay for. And in soundproofing, that is certainly true. So to conclude, there are a number of soundproofing hacks across the internet, which are in fact myths. And we hope this video has explained why there's no substitute for choosing a tried and tested soundproofing system. The science doesn't lie and cheaper alternatives or quick fixes will only lead to disappointing results. If you're suffering from a noise problem and are feeling overwhelmed by options and information, if you need a helping hand to point you in the right direction, please give us a call and speak to one of our highly trained technical advisors. You can also find more honest and accurate info on our website at soundproofingstore.co.uk. And if you'd enjoyed this video and would like to see more of our soundproofing content, then give this video a like and subscribe to the Soundproofing Store channel.